since Christmas, a day, and the day of St. Stephen, first martyr. Princes, moreover, did sit and did witness falsely against me, a day that was always most dear to the Archbishop Thomas, and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Princes, moreover, did sit. The introit of St. Stephen is heard, and the second priest enters the banner of St. John, the apostle born before him. And he says, Since St. Stephen a day, and the day of St. John, the apostle, in the midst of the congregation he opened his mouth, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, and our hands have handled, of the word of life, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you in the midst of the congregation. The introit of St. John is heard, and the third priest enters with a banner of the holy innocence born before him and says, Since St. John, the apostle, a day, and the day of the holy innocence, out of the mouth of very babes, O God, as the voice of many waters, a thunder of harps, they sung, as it were, a new song. The blood of thy saints have they shed like water, and there was no man to bury them. Avenge, O Lord, the blood of thy saints, in Rama, a voice heard, weeping. Out of the mouths of very babes, O God. The priests stand together with the banners behind them. The first priest says, Since the holy innocence, a day. The fourth day from Christmas, three priests Say, rejoice, we all, keeping the holy day. As for the people, so also for himself. He offereth for sins. He lays down his life for the sheep. As for the people, too, for the sheep, the first priest. I don't think I made that distinction. The three priests said, rejoice, we all, keeping the holy day. The first priest said, Today? The second priest said, Today? What is today? For the day is half gone. The first priest said, Today? What is today? But another day, the dusk of the year. The second priest said, Today? What is today? Another night and another dawn. The third priest said, What day is the day that we know, that we hope for, or fear for. Every day is the day which we should fear from, or hope from, one moment, ways like another, only in retrospection, selection. We say that was the day, the critical moment. That is always now, and here, even now, in sordid particulars, the eternal design may appear. Four knights enter, and the banners disappear. The first knight says, Servants of the king, the first priest says, And known to us, you were welcome. Have you ridden far? The first knight says, Not far today, but matters urgent. Have brought us from France. We rode hard. Took ship yesterday, landed last night, having business with the archbishop. And the second knight says, urgent business. The third knight says, from the king. The second knight says, by the king's order. The first knight says, our men are outside. The first priest says, you know the archbishop's hospitality. We are about to go to dinner. A good archbishop would be vexed 
if we did not offer you entertainment before your business. Please dine with us. Your men shall be looked after also. Dinner before business. Do you like roast pork? The first knight said. Business before dinner. We will roast your pork first and dine upon it after. The second knight said, We must see the archbishop. The third knight said, Go and tell the archbishop. We have no need of his hospitality. We will find our own dinner. The first priest says to attendant, Go tell his lordship. The fourth knight, How much longer will you keep us waiting? Thomas enters and says to the priest, However certain our expectation, the moment foreseen may be unexpected. When it arrives, it comes. When we are engrossed with matters of other urgency. On my table, you will find the papers in order and the document signed. Tonight's, you are welcome, whatever your business may be. You say, from the king. First night, most surely from the king. We must speak with you, also, uh, with you alone. Thomas said to the priests, leave us then alone. Now what is the matter? The first knight says, This is the matter, the three knights say. You are the archbishop, in revolt against the king, in rebellion to the king, and the law of the land. You are the archbishop, who is made by the king, whom he set in your place to carry out his command. You are his servant, his tool, and his jack. You wore his favors on your back. You had your honors, all from his hand. From him you had the power, the seal, and the ring. This is the man who was the tradesman's son, the backstairs brat who was born in Cheapside. This is the creature that crawled upon the king, swollen with blood and swollen with pride, creeping out of the London dirt, crawling up like a louse on your shirt. The man who cheated, swindled, lied, broke his oath, and betrayed the king, Thomas said, This is not true. Both before and after I received the ring, I have been a loyal subject to the king. Saving my order, I am at his command. As his most faithful vassal in the land, the first knight said, Saving your order? Let your order save you, as I do not think it is like to do. Saving your ambition is what you mean. Saving your pride, envy, and spleen, the second knight said. Saving your insolence and greed. Won't you ask us to pray to God for you in your need? The third knight, yes, we will pray for you. The first knight said, yes, we will pray for you. The, third, the three knights say, yes, we will pray that God may help you. Thomas said, but gentlemen, your business, which you said is so urgent, is it only scolding? and blaspheming? The first knight said, that was only our indignation as loyal subjects. Thomas said, loyal to whom? The first knight said, to the king. The second knight said, the king. The third knight said, the king. The three knights said, God bless him. Thomas said, then let your new coat of loyalty be worn carefully so that it get not soiled or torn. Have you something to say? The first knight said, By the king's command, shall we say it now? The second knight said, Without delay, before the old fox is off and away. Thomas said, What have you to say by the king's command? If it be the king's command, should be said in public. If you make charges, then in public I will refute them. The first knight said, No, here and now. They make, an a they make to attack him, but the priests and attendants return and quietly interposed themselves. Thomas said, Now and here, the first knight said, Of your earlier misdeeds I shall make no mention. They are too well known. But after dissension had ended in France, and you were endued with former privilege, how did you show your gratitude? You had fled from England, not exiled or threatened, mind you, but in the hope of stirring up trouble in the French dominions. You sowed strife abroad. You reviled the king to the king of France, to the pope, 
raising up against him false opinions, the second knight said, Yet the king, out of his charity, and urged by your friends, offered clemency, made a pact of peace, and all dispute ended, sent you back to your sea as you demanded. The third knight said, And bearing the memory of your transgressions, restored your honors and your possessions. All was granted for which you sued. Yet, how, I repeat, did you show your gratitude? The first knight said, spending those who had crowned the young prince, oh, sus suspending those who had crowned the young prince, denying the legality of his coronation. The second knight said, binding with the chains of anathema. The third knight said, using every means in your power to invent the king's faithful servants, everyone who transacts his business in his absence, the business of the nation. The first knight said, these are the facts. Say, therefore, if you will be content to answer in the king's presence, therefore were we sent. Thomas said, never was it my wish to uncrown the king's son or diminish his honor and power. Why should he wish to deprive my people and keep me from my own and bid me sit in Canterbury alone? I would wish him three crowns rather than one. And as for the bishops, it is not my yoke that is laid upon them are mine to revoke. Let them go to the Pope. It was he who condemned them. The first night, through you they were suspended. The second night, by you be this amended. The third night, absolve them. The first night, absolve them. Thomas, I do not deny that this was done through me, but it is not I who can loose whom the Pope has bound. Let them go to him upon whom redounds their contempt towards me, their contempt towards the church shown. The first knight says, Be that as it may, here is the king's command that you and your servants depart from this land. Thomas said, If that is the king's command, I will be bold to say, Seven years were my people without my presence. Seven years of misery and pain. Seven years a mendicant on foreign charity. I lingered abroad. Seven years is no brevity. I shall not get those seven years back again. Never again, you must make no doubt, shall the sea run between the shepherd and his fold. The first knight said, The king's justice, the king's majesty, you insult with gross indignity. Insolent madman, whom nothing deters from attaining his servants and ministers. Thomas said, It is not I who insult the king, and there is higher than I are the king. It is not I, Becket, from Cheapside. It is not against me, Becket, that you strive. It is not Becket who pronounces doom, but the law of Christ's church, the judgment of Rome. Now, sometimes things aren't personal, you know, you're just the object of the force of the state or something like that, or somebody's condemnation or mistreatment. But really, if it's because of your behavior, it's your behavior. Now, you take responsibility for your behavior, right or wrong, how what, people persecuting you, it may make it worse that they're, oh, we don't like you because you observe spiritual things. Um, well, you know, not going to stop because, you know, but I can't say, oh, well, it's only because it's religiously prescribed that I do it. If that's the case, that's the case. But I've made that choice. The first knight said, Priest, you have spoken in peril of your life. The second knight says, Priest, you have spoken in danger of the knife. The third knight says, Priest, you have spoken treachery and treason. Third, The three knights say, Priest, traitor, confirmed in malfeasance. Thomas said, I submit my cause to the judgment of Rome. 
But if you kill me, I shall rise from my tomb to submit my cause for God's throne. And then there's the exit. And the fourth knight says, Priest, monk, and servant, take hold, detain, restrain this man in the king's name. The first knight said, Or answer with your bodies. Second knight said, Enough of words. The four or knights, we come for the king's justice. We come with swords. Excuse. And one thing that is very apparent is that some people become police or gangsters or whatever, or military men or whatever the choice with that. Because, you know, they like the violence, they like to operate force. It's not so much about a cause. 